Good evening everyone and welcome to Norristown High School. My name is Joseph Hyland and along with Bob Koch, we will, we will be bringing you tonight's second round District 1 playoff contest between the uh, Norristown Lady Eagles and the Conestoga Lady Pioneers. Norristown is coming off a powerful showing, a dominating 42 point win over a clearly overmatched team from Avon Grove. According to Coach Jackson, with whom I spoke uh, before the game, he was satisfied with the Eagles' performance, but said, and I think correctly, that the performance was far from, uh, far from perfect. Uh, the Eagles had their way uh, easily with uh, Avon Grove. Tonight's opponent, however, may prove to be a little more difficult. Coach, ja Coach Jackson's Eagles will be led, of course, by uh, Leanna Moore and Tamisha Johnson, their two uh, go-to players. Both uh, Leanna and Tamisha had what I like to call quietly effective games uh, against uh, Avon Grove. However, tonight I look, f I look uh, for them to assert themselves uh, a little more and a little stronger. Tamara Halsey, who is back from a bout with the flu, had an exceptional game against uh, Avon Grove, shooting well and skillfully running the Eagles offense. Also, Sasha Sims and Danielle Marshall had excellent games against the uh, Lady Devils. I think that the key to tonight's game will be Norristown's ability to run its fast-breaking transition offense. And the key to that, of course, is the Eagles' uh, defense. I think that if Norristown is able to apply swarming defensive pressure, it should result in turnovers. And those turnovers will trigger its offense. And the hallmark, as everyone knows, of the Eagles' offense is speed, speed, and more speed. So. Uh, now I'll uh, turn you over to uh, Coach Koch, who will bring you up to date with regard to the Conestoga Lady Pioneers. Bob? Good evening, everybody. I think this game has the potential for being another one of those that could be over in a hurry. Conestoga starts five, uh, four underclassmen, one senior. They have a freshman point guard. So this is the second consecutive game that Norristown will be facing a point guard that's a freshman. They start a sophomore, two juniors, and a senior. So Coach is already thinking about next year. This is going to be an experienced game for him. Th their team is off in a very important upset of a North Penn team, which was in a better seed than them, and they defeated North Penn in a close game at North Penn. However, I don't see the matchups as being one that uh, will be successful against the Norristown team, primarily because of the size, because of the youth. Uh, they're not going. I don't think they're going to have the inside game. They're only averaging about 41 points a game, which is similar to what Avon Grove posted last week in their game. And uh, the, the one advantage I think that they have, it will probably be a better or more competitive game because they do have an inside-outside game. Their leading scorer is a perimeter shooter. She plays the three position and can shoot threes from the outside. Their two inside players are good inside players, averaging nine and ten points a game, respectively. But the other two players are going to have to really step up if they're going to put some points on the board. Defensively, Coates was pretty non-committal. They do play man. They do play zone. They will switch things up quite a bit. Um, but he's going to have to play an awesome defensive game. And, and we know, Joe, at this point in the season, we've seen Norristown so many times. The fact of the matter is, Norristown's assets are their transition, their inside game, their ability to run the court and score points off the pressure. The downside, of course, is that we're concerned about and probably will see after tonight's game as to whether they can play a half-court game and score effectively off the half-court game. I don't think Conestoga is going to offer them enough resistance tonight to make the half-court game a factor. I look for the same thing we saw in the first game in the district playoffs, run, put points on the board, press, pump the ball inside. Uh, Tamisha and Liam will uh, pick up their points off of the offensive glass, and uh, I would project that this will be over pretty soon. It'll be interesting to see if the Eagles, if they if they build up a lead, uh, will uh, work on fine-tuning their their half-court offense. Um, 
if they if they uh, generate a big lead, uh, they'll they'll certainly have an opportunity to do so. Correct, Bob? Correct. The opportunity will be there, but based on the script we saw the other night, that was not the program that they followed, and I don't expect that'll change tonight. I, I would look for him to put a lot of points on the board when, quite frankly, he should be looking to that next game, which could be Abington, and uh, that will be that is a team that did defeat Norristown in overtime several weeks ago, and it's a well-coached team, a very disciplined team, and plays very solid defense. So it, it would seem to me this game has got to be an imprint for the next one. All right, that'll wrap up uh, tonight's uh, pregame show. Uh, we'll see you back here in a few minutes for the uh, opening tip, the uh, national anthem, and the introduction for tonight's starting lineup. So for Bob Koch, this is Joe Hyland saying so long for now. All right, welcome back to the... Uh, Norristown High School Gymnasium. Uh, Joe Hyland along with Bob Koch to bring you uh, tonight's uh, District 1 playoff between the Norristown Lady Eagles and the Conestoga Lady Pioneers. We're going to have the uh, introduction of the starting lineups. First for the Lady Pioneers of Conestoga. At this time, I want to remind everyone that these games are under the auspices of the PIAA and all behavior is being checked from this table. And now for the starting lineups. For Conestoke, number 13, Quinn Dwyer. Number 13 is a freshman, uh, Quinn Dwyer, a 5'5 five five, uh, point guard. Number 15, Katie Richards. Number 15, is Katie Richards, a 5'9 uh, senior Number guard. Number 21, Lizzie Scheel, a 5'11 junior guard. Number 32, Ashley Davis. Number 32, Ashley Davis, a 5'11 junior who is and a forward two, center. And number 50, a transfer from Virginia, Maria Hillenbrand, a six, six foot sophomore. Bob, they're starting three, uh, three guards. Yeah, and I think I think that's what he's going to have to do. He said the two inside players he counting he's counting on to be successful, but he I hasn't know. seen Norristown. What's that? He hasn't seen Norristown, and that's a serious liability. Right. You have no idea what you're getting into unless you've seen them and see the inside outside game. Here's a Norristown starting lineup. Number four, Sasha Sims. The uh, point guard is Tamara Halsey. Danielle Marshall, the uh, the swing forward for uh, Norristown. Number 33 is Leanne Moore, and number 34 is of course uh, Tamisha Johnson. Norristown looks ready. They look they look readier tonight than they looked the other night, Bob. Yeah, well, I, they probably realized the first game wasn't going to be that tough. This game, this team pulled off an upset. So we'll stand now for the playing of the national anthem.
All right, Conestoga takes the floor. Waiting for the Eagles. Jumping center for Conestoga is Christine Nerney. Tamisha Johnson for the Lady Eagles. Here we go. Tap control by the Eagles easily. Halsey out front, top of the key, Leanne Moore. Trips and falls, traveling call on Leanne Moore. Well, you see Conestoga starting out in a person to person right from the beginning, and they got a little help on the help side with the reach, but I, I didn't see a lot of help side in front of. She mm -hmm. had a possibility to score an easy bucket to start the game. Norristown in a person to person. Conestoga is led by their freshman point guard, number 13, with the ball now is Quinn Dwyer. There's a steal by Norristown. Sasha Sims running the break. Beautiful pass. Norristown hustling on the offensive boards. It's going to be so critical for Conestoga tonight to hit the glass on both ends of the court. Right. On the defensive end, not to give out Norristown the offensive putback, and on the other end to make good passes. The only way we're going to stay in this game is to minimize mistakes. There's now, a nice pass inside. What we're seeing already, Joe, is Conestoga is very patient. They're going to work the ball inside. That's a good start for them. That's some nice inside passing. Yep. Ashley Davis with the basket. There's Tamara Halsey with a drive to the basket. Scores tied two apiece. Gonna be a lot of pressure on number 13, the freshman point guard yes, for Conestoga, absolutely. because she's gonna have to match up with Danielle Marshall or Sasha Sims. It's gonna be a tough evening, I think, for her. Yeah. All right, number 21 with the ball is Lizzie Shield. Back to Quinn Dwyer. Conestoga working the ball, nice pass inside. Here's 50, rebound, Halsey. Eagles look to run. There's a foul on number 15, Katie Richards. Norristown was looking to run, Bob. Yeah, and that's, that's gonna be their format yeah. tonight. Push the ball up court, look for the easy basket. Um, we'll see how long Conestoga is able to play person to person, because yeah. it looks like Norristown's gonna go to the basket every opportunity they have. There's a nice pass inside. Here's Tamisha Johnson with the follow-up. She's fouled. Norristown's inside power. Right. It, yeah. The key to anybody yeah. that's going to play Norristown is to box out. Person, the shot goes up, butt the thigh, get the hands up and block out. You're not going to be able to neutralize Tamisha or Leanne once they get the ball. How does a, a player with a slighter build Box out a, a, a put the butt to the thigh. That'll neutralize anybody okay. because the person has to go around. It takes three seconds from the point of release to come off. So all you have to do is maintain that contact briefly uh -huh. in your position to rebound. Okay. There's an errant pass. Norristown's ball. Five-two. Five and a half minutes to play in the first quarter. You see, quarter. Conestoga's had three possessions, turned it over twice. Yes, indeed. Here's Halsey. Nice, smooth jump shot, Tamara Halsey. She's picking up where she left off, Bob. Yeah, and, and the player went underneath the screen instead of going on the top side and gave her a clear, uncontested shot. That's not going to work. You have to you have to slide through it on the top side to, to prevent that. She was well underneath it. The defensive player wasn't in sight on that. I'd like to follow up on what we were talking about on 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 boxing out. You're saying that a a a player who is smaller and lighter can effectively box out a person who's who's heavier and taller by yeah. She has the inside position. Okay. So what she has to do is put the arms up, open the legs a little bit, and put the butt what they call the butt to thigh. Okay. Put the cheeks to the thigh and. <laughs> 
That's it. Right. And and the okay. and the player has to go right or left, doesn't have the inside move to the basket. So if you're able to sustain that very briefly, you can put yourself in a position to rebound. Like the key is getting in position to put your butt to the right. thigh and sustain the contact, even right. if it's brief. All right, we're back to the action. Uh, Norristown came out in a rather soft zone press, broken very easily by the Lady Pioneers. Tamara Halsey hawking the ball. There's a pass inside again, stolen by the Eagle. They look to run. Danielle Marshall looking to run. Ooh, got away with a push off. Push there. off there by Ooh. Sasha Sims. Yes, that was. There's, a, there's a, a wing jump shot by number 33, Leanne Moore. I believe the shot counted, but the foul was on right, Norris. Right. What's the rule there, Bobby? If, 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 if the shot is on after its way? The shot, right. oh, okay. After the shot's released and she fouled, she pushed off, she got caught. But actually, there could have been a, a foul previous to that on a loose ball yep. with the elbow pushing out. See, Conestoga is looking to continually get it inside, and it's not working. Right. I mean, their post player does not match up favorably with Tamisha on the inside. Tamisha's much quicker and stronger. And you can't keep going to the well on that. There's a nice drive, a nice give and go. Basket by number 32, Ashley Davis. That would nice seem run. to me, right, that's what they're going to have to do. Working it directly into the low post is not going to work well for Conestoga tonight. They have to work the cuts, the back doors, the screens. Danielle Marshall wants to play tonight. There's, a, there's another drive to the basket. She's just blowing by her, uh, her opponent, Bob. Just blowing right by her. Well, he better, he better think about his own. That's nice a nice move. move. Yes, That's a nice move. Number 21. Nice Lizzie reverse Shield. spin off the glass. And you notice there was no one from Norristown on the help side on that. She beat her defender and nobody came over to help. Right. Conestoga is still in a person to person. There's Sasha Sims. Missed the layup. Out of bounds. It'll be Conestoga's was blocked. Ball. The shot was blocked on that, Joe. She got her hand on the ball. The, the Conestoga player got a hand on the ball. Now, see, Conestoga's They're working the middle, the middle Bob. They're team. working in the middle, unlike right. Avon Grove, remember? See, now, what I'm impressed with, Conestoga, now, Conestoga's coach is a five-year coach. Uh, they play in a fairly strong leg, not a real strong leg, but strong enough it has Haverford and Shanahan, two very good teams. And uh, this team, you can tell, is well coached. They're moving the ball. They're not, you see the entry pass was not in the corner trap areas. That's it was correct. with Avon Grove. Uh, they're getting it to the middle. And they're looking to run the court. And that's one of the things coach, is, coach said prior to the game. If he has the avenue to run, he wants to do it. They're not a transition team, but if it's there, they want to take mm -hmm. advantage of it. He was very non-committal as to what they do or don't do. Quinn Dwyer missed uh, two shots. Good box out by Tamisha Johnson. That was, that was nice. Nobody was going to get that ball. Nice pass inside. Here's, here's Danielle Marshall. There it is. Yep. Got to look the middle. Oh, good angle. Nice reverse. Now nice. she's got to use the glass. Nice she play. Used. Nice, nice play. Nice clever play, absolutely. Norristown won't be happy with that. They give up a layup. Here's, here's Halsey. Looking to break down her man per person. <laughs> Good correction, Joe. Thank you. There's a nice strong offensive rebound by Tamisha Johnson. Working inside as she usually does. She's a force in there, Bob. Right, and and Conestoga's players are going to have to realize very quickly they will not stop Tamisha or Leanne. Once they get the ball in the paint or in the box, they will have to get to the ball first. Here's Tamisha with two shots. Two minutes to play. Norristown up five, up six. Shots in the first, up two. 
Into the game for Conestoga is number 42, Lauren Lundy. Taking a breather is uh, their freshman point guard, Quinn Dwyer. I, I think this could be serious <laughs> in yeah. terms of, of uh, liabilities because they, they gave up some serious speed for the player they just put in. Now, maybe she's a better ball handler or a three-point shooter, but uh, one of the other players is going to have to step up and handle the ball for yep. them. Once again, Conestoga had Norristown beat on the press. If, if she sees the ball, the Conestoga player sees it and doesn't trip over it, it's a 2-0 break. Tom, with Norristown's speed and, and, and reaction ability, uh, isn't a pass like that dangerous, a long pass like that? Yes, very. Uh, all right, there, here's a turnaround jumper by number 33, Leanne Moore. See, now I see what, he, what he's looking at. 42 inbound of the ball. What 42 brings is she's got the overhead pass. You see where that ball went? Yes. She beat the press with that pass. Yes. Quick, strong pass, right to the middle. Two passes, and it's over the court. And she walked inside number 42. Lauren Lundy walked, traveled, whatever you want to call it. Here comes Norristown, up nine with a minute and a half to play. A nice hustle play by yeah, Conestoga. Very smart too. She picked it up and, and looked to get rid of it very quickly. You don't want to jump ball on that. Right. Here's Lundy with the ball. Do you notice too, Joe, that, that Conestoga is not turning the ball over as Avon Grove did yes. on the travels and the passes? Conestoga is sustaining possession. Here's a powerful offensive rebound by Tamisha Johnson. Let us see it. They broke the press that time. Here's number 21. There's a foul on the floor. Fouls on Tamara Halsey. Here's Ashley O'Donnell, who played a very good, nice game against Avon Grove. Yes, yes. There's a, there's a three launched from East Norton. I, 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 I. And that's the player that Coach said prior to the game is the three-point shooter, and, and they're going to need a lot of that. Yep. They want to stay close. Um, with 18 seconds left, see how Norristown plays it, and, and who do you think is going to get the ball? All right, Norristown goes into its offense. Here's Tamisha looking to drive. Shooter's roll. And, and you know, that was an easy score for her. She just took it, went to the basket. That's the end of the first quarter with Norristown leading uh, 21 uh, to 11 against Conestoga. Tamisha Johnson, her usual strong uh, game, both ends of the floor. I think Daniel Marshall is playing uh, uh, extremely well. Uh, she had at least three excellent drives to the basket, simply blew by her, uh, her opponent. See, what Norristown brings to the table is they can go inside, they can go outside. If one player's not scoring, two players not scoring, maybe even three, they still have two other players that are going to carry it. Right. And you cannot beat the inside shot. Right. For points, for fouls, for foul shots that it generates, you can't beat it. Right. And Conestoga in the first quarter has not proven they can stop the inside game in Norristown. Right. Norristown doesn't have to shoot outside the rest of the night. No. That's Just correct. keep working it inside. Interesting to see what adjustments Conestoga makes. Now, he's given up 21 points playing man. He hasn't tried zone. It might be time for him to look and see yeah. if a zone will work, and you get, at least you would get in better rebound position to stop Tamisha and Leanne. Exactly. Now, see what he does on this. All right, it'll be Conestoga's ball out on the possession. Lundy to inbound. Here's number 10 in for the, in, in for the uh, uh, Lady Pioneers, uh, Jesse Wozlewski. Here's a drive to the basket. Knocked out of bounds by Norristown. Lizzie Scheel made a strong move to the basket. Number 
Number 21, Lizzie Shield walked. Took one extra step. Norristown's ball out. Leading by 10. They're still in a man, Bob. No, it looks like a 1-3-1. One, one. Yep. They're setting up in a 1-3-1. One, one. I stand corrected. You're absolutely yep, right. 1-3-1. One, one. <laughs> worked that time. Yeah, it worked yeah. on that, but, yeah. but Norristown helped them out by taking a deep shot. Yeah. The, the weakness of the 1-3-1 one, one is the corners, it's the baseline mm -hmm. in the middle. The, the strength of the 1-3-1 one, one is the chaser and the perimeter game, but, but I don't think that's what he needs to work on with them. I would rather see him in a 2-1-2 two, two, or 2-3 where he has players inside and see if Norristown can make the outside shots. Uh -huh. There's a pass inside. Nice steal by number 21. Falls hard to the floor. Norristown's ball. Number 21, Lizzie Shield took a, a nasty tumble, but she's okay. Now, you see what, what Jackson's doing on this. He's going with Sasha, and there will be her zone breaker, going with Sasha outside. Mm -hmm. um, Let's see what Sasha looks to do and see how Norristown attacks us. Right. Norristown looks like you're going to start with a one. It'll be a two guard set. Looks like they're going to what we call a two one two set with Leanne at the high post and your two baseline players and two perimeter Sasha players. Sasha Sims, Bob, you called it. You called it from the right wing. Sasha Sims with a jump shot. The zone, bu the zone buster. Here's Sheil. Number 32 is Ashley Davis, tall, willowy girl. Wozlewski, number 50, Maria Hillenbrand. Conestoga showing good patience. There's Sasha Sims scrambling on the floor, stealing the pass. Here's Danielle Marshall, stops and pops, misses the shot. Here, Lundy with the rebound. You see, there's an open player. Danielle was back, but uh, number 42 didn't see her early enough. She was open. Uh, if that pass is out front, it's a score. Danielle Marshall playing uh, like a center fielder or a, or a free safety in football. Nice play. There's an errant three. Here comes Halsey. Danielle Marshall, good look. Bingo. Danielle Marshall, nice pass from Halsey. But no hands up on defense either. There's nobody there to influence that shot. That's going to make it awful tough to defend if you're not in position and say catch and shoot. Danielle Marshall is playing a whale of a game. She is like a woman possessed out there. Tanisha Johnson better get her shirt in. That'll be Conestoga's ball. Seems Danielle Marshall's in fourth gear tonight. And he just took her out to give her a break. Yep. I still don't like that bounce pass to the top or to the wing. It's too slow a pass. Now, did you see the block out on the part of yes. Tamara Halsey? That's what you want done. You want to put the butt and the hands up, get that butt in that thigh area. Tamisha Johnson does a nice job on that. Conestoga still in a 1-3-1. There's a foul on the floor. Now, if, if Norristown is able to get the ball into the high post on against the 1-3-1, it's a score. Because if that player turns and looks, there's only one defender back. The player guarding the high post player, and there's one player whose job is to cover both boxes in the corners. So, 
if they can get it into the high post, which will be Leanne, she can either go to the basket or she can hit the two wing players. There's a strong rebound. Norristown's ball. That call, that call draws some hoots from the Conestoga fans. That's Tamisha Johnson's second foul with uh, four minutes to play in, know, the, in the first half. Like, you know, it's that coaching instinct. You keep thinking about the future, and you think Conestoga is going to be around next year because they have four underclassmen yes. and a nice team, and so will Norristown be around next year. Norristown's doubling Conestoga, and Leanne Moore has not been a factor in this game. That's correct. So the four underclassmen uh -huh. against their four underclassmen and a senior on both sides, Norristown has dominated the game with the four underclassmen. It's not like coach can say, well, wait till next year, you know, we have four right. players back. Well, instinctively you look at this and say, whoa, Norristown scoring without their senior scholarship mm -hmm. player yep. putting points on the board. Yep. I think Leon has four, and that's it. If that. Yep. And All right, here's Maria Hillenbrand. Fouled while in the act of shooting. She'll get two, misses the first. Ms. Hillenbrand is a, uh, uh, the family moved uh, from Virginia into the Conestoga area. Makes the second of two, 25-12, Norristown by 13. Yeah, how about this? Conestoga's putting on some pressure. Yeah. They broke the press very easily, Bob. Pass, pass, pass. Right. Yeah. They broke it easily, and it's all relative. Who's the player back protecting the basket? And number 50 does not match up speed-wise or lateral movement-wise with what Norristown's going right. to do getting up off court. Your backside defender on that is to protect the basket and force a jump shot. She cannot give up a layup, period. And the last thing you want to do is a layup and a foul. Right. All right, three and a half minutes to play. 27-12 Norristown. Pass inside to Hillenbrand, looking to shoot. There's a foul on number 33, Leanne Moore. That's Norristown's sixth foul. One more and they're in the bonus. The Con Conestoga's in the bonus. Working the ball, showing a lot of patience. Pass inside. That's a nice play. That's nice a nice play. play. That was. See, I, I like Conestoga offensively. Uh -huh. They're patient and they're willing to keep working inside. Uh, sort of a, a, a variation on, on a high low, right, Bob? Right. Yeah. Right. And, and it was very patient. I mean, they, they had five or six passes. Uh -huh. That's what I said to you over and over about right. being patient. Wait to see what happens. Uh, I, I think that was an important possession for Norristown. There's a football pass. That's an important by. turnover for yep. Conestoga. Yep. Leanne Moore, jumper from the top of the key. Four point turnaround, Bob. Very quick. Yep. I mean, yep. Conestoga made a poor mistake, it's a poor judgment call on that pass. Just not what you want, and that, it's a quick four-point play. Yep. All right, here's a foul on, I believe, Ashley O'Donnell underneath. No, coach won't be happy with that. It's not the individual fouls that hurt them right now. It's the team fouls, but still, it's a 15-point spread. Here's Ashley Davis, a 5'11 uh, forward center. Nice drive to the basket. Conestoga's in the penalty. Missed a one and one Norristown's ball. Long Conestoga pass. player had to rebound, didn't know what to do with yep. it. All right, Norristown's ball on the out-of-bounds play. Now, if you're Conestoga, Joe, 
The last two minutes, 23 seconds, what are you looking to do? You're on the spot, you're the coach, what are you looking to do? I'm looking to... Um, Offensively, what do you want to do? I want to get the ball inside. Okay, you're in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Yep. You want to take good shots, but you want to go to the basket, right. right? You want to get to that foul line, see if you can draw a foul on someone else, right? Put some oh. points on the board the easy way. Yep. And not turn it over. Defensively, they have to stop here. Yeah. I mean, uh, this two minutes is an important period. They want to get a couple stops here and put some points on the board. I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, they got to look. They got to look to number 32, Ashley Davis, Hillenbrand. Number 21 to inbound is Lizzie Shield. Conestoga's freshman point guard hasn't returned either. I, I noticed that. I noticed that. Well, she's probably never seen a defense like North. Right, I haven't seen that quickness. That's and right. She was making her, attempting to make her passes too far out, right. and that kills your offense. Here's Hillenbrand. Here comes Danielle Marshall. Nice play by Conestoga. Here come the Lady Pioneers. Very smart play. Very smart play on her part. Yep. Ashley should have done a better job boxing out. And then you're taught, you teach your players, when that's coming up, you turn sideways. Yes. So you narrow the point that you can get hit. Exactly. All right, Quinn Dwyer's back into the game now, the freshman point guard. Top of the key. Nice jump shot by number 15. That's Katie Richards. Thirty-one sixteen. Fifty-six seconds left to play. Marshall, beautiful jump shot. Open. She got a good look, Bob. Yeah, beautiful and, look. And what's got to be frustrating for Conestoga? They come down and it's two passes and it's a score. Conestoga is working very hard offensively to put points on the board. Norristown comes down and scores, and it's easy. Yeah. Now 13 is back in the game. With yes. 30 seconds left in the game. Here's Davis. See, see what their game plan is. Conestoga is patient enough yeah. to try and work yeah. the ball inside. They're smart enough to know that they're in the penalty and 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 they're right, going to the basket, inside. like you said, Buck. Sound solid coaching. They understand the game. Right now, Erica Deaver came in the game. Now you want to see what Erica? And see, you heard me say last last game, Erica doesn't take a shot unless there's a layup with 19 seconds right. left. And we'll see if I'm wrong on this. Nice play. Dan Danielle Marshall. She's the story of the first half. Running the floor, playing nice good play. defense. That was a nice, nice play. play. She finished the shots. She was fouled and and uh, opportunity to double, over double. <coughs> Danielle completes the three-point play. Norristown by 20. 12 seconds to play. Conestoga needs a field goal, at least walk in at halftime yep. and say, look, we can come out and start the second half and start over. Here's a foul on, I believe, no, I think it was out of bounds on Norristown. I think, I think Sasha took a hand to the face. She got stung a little bit there. She's okay. Yeah, she's out of the game. She got, she, I, I think she got slapped in the face. Right. Yeah. Three and a half seconds to play. Shot by Shield at the, uh, at the end of the first half, uh, missed. That ends the first half with Norristown with a 20-point lead, 36-16. Uh, to uh, 16. I think, Bob, the story of the first half for Norristown was uh, Danielle Marshall. I she agree. She has come to play.
and uh, where Leanne hasn't been able to put the points on the board, uh, Tamisha Johnson early and Danielle Marshall. But again, it's an illustration that Norristown has a lot of scoring opportunities. Well, they can beat you inside and outside, and they can beat you off the transition. You're right. And uh, Conestoga really has a lot of work cut out. Now, I'm thinking in terms of the previous game, the score was 52 to the Avon Grove game was 52 to 12 yes. at, at halftime. Yes. And look at this: it's 36 to 16. Um, Conestoga is a much better team, and it's still a 20-point differential. Absolutely, absolutely. Conestoga is well coached. You can tell that a lot of these kids have played AAU basketball. Mm -hmm. They're involved in a lot of things for Conestoga, and uh, they're still at a 16-point spread. Yes. So yes. Uh, in other words, Conestoga is playing a, a pretty good game, and they're still down right. 20. They're yeah. playing. Yeah. I don't know if they can play a lot better unless they can no turnovers in the in the second half if uh, they don't give up second shots, third shots, and uh, they play much better on defense. And they haven't been able to stop Norristown defensively. I think the only person in foul trouble for the Eagles is Tamisha Johnson with two. Right. So and she has three to play with. Right, and that's yeah. not serious. Yeah. That's not serious. Right. And most of her, uh, traditionally what we've seen with Tamisha, her fouls are reaching fouls or position fouls. Right. It's not uh, her athleticism that gets her in trouble. Sometimes she gets lazy with her feet right. and she reaches. Right. All right. Thank you, Bob. That'll uh, wrap up the first half again with Norristown with a 20-point lead, 36-16. We'll be back uh, uh, after a uh, after a short break for the start of the third period. This for Bob Koch. This is Joe Highland saying so long for now. All right. Here we are back for the start of the second half. This game, this District 1 Round 2 playoff game between the Norristown Eagles and the uh, Conestoga Pioneers. Norristown with a commanding 20-point lead. Conestoga has played well, and it has to be a little discouraging for the Lady Pioneers to know that they've played so well, and they're still down 20 points. Norristown will start Halsey, Marshall, Moore, Sims, and Johnson. Conestoga will start the same five young ladies that started in the, in the, in the first half. Here's Norristown's ball. Halsey with the ball. Ball slipped through Halsey's hands, Conestoga's ball. Number 21 is Lizzie Shield, had a nice first half, courageous first half. Here's their freshman point guard, Quinn Dwyer. Looks like a Quinn Dwyer. <laughs> you put nice, in the purse. nice pass inside. Nice, strong rebound by Leanne Moore. Oh, brother. Oh, nice brother. pass. Penetration and dish. Penetration. Nobody stepped up from the top of the key to the paint to take the charge. Here's a lead pass to number 15. Pass. Nice play by Quinn Dwyer. Off a nice pass. Yeah, yeah. nice pass. Huh? Flat shot. She got away with it, but uh, she didn't back off on the shot. Right. Tough kid. Two Sims. No, it's too far out. 13 can't go out there. It's going to create too big a seam. Nice there shot. It Sasha Sims. Going to create a seam. You can't do it. 41 18. If you're going to do that, if you're going to play 2 1 2 like that with Norristown's lineup, you need to match it up and play the ball in a spot. You don't need to come out and chase it. Do you see the gap that she created when she yes. came out and chased that at the, almost to the red line? Here's a foul on Leanne, Leanne Moore, her second. Foul on Moore, her second team first. As a baseball pass, thrown away. The important point is that Norristown was beat on that. Conestoga catches the ball, but she threw it off her own player. Yes. She didn't see her player. Now, let's see what Conestoga can do in a 2-1-2. Two -two. Their hands are down. Hands are down. Yep. 
Got to shrink the passing lanes. Nice shot. Sasha Sims. Five straight Coach points. Conestoga was just raising his hands as to say, oh, what can we do next? We tried a 1-3-1, one, one, we played man, we're in a 2-1-2. Two, right. two. Nice drive to the basket. Here's a jump ball, possession arrow goes to the Lady Pioneers. But it's the same old story, Joe. It's not the defense you play, it's jump how ball. you play it. Yep. Yep. Anything will work or anything will fail, depending on what the execution is. Good point. A tough shot inside. They're going right at the Lady Eagles, Bob. Yeah. yeah and, uh, Good going at them. They're obviously not afraid. Mm -hmm. These kids are, are very committed to going to the basket. I like to see that. Anybody would like to see that from a coaching standpoint. The foul on Halsey. That was her first. Number 15 is Katie Richards. I spoke to her uh, dad uh, at halftime. She's the only senior on the team. Looking forward to going to the University of Michigan. Woo. Playing sports? No, no. Turnover. All right, Conestoga's ball. Number 32 out is uh, Ashley Davis. Here's Hillenbrand. Drive to the basket. Nice, strong drive to the basket. Draws the foul. Uh, that shouldn't happen. Why? The help side Explain defense why. should be there to stop it. And... Hilton Brand does not match up quickness wise. That was on Leanne? Yes. Tamisha? That was on Leanne? I think so, yes. Well, that's Leanne. That's her third foul. And, and here you go. Coach is going to pull her. Yep. So, Coach can't be happy that she picked up a foul on a player that doesn't match up quickness wise with her. Right, Hill and Brand makes the first, makes the second. 43 20, Norris down by 23. Five and a half minutes to play in the third period. Now see, he's changed defenses again. Yes. He's going to a one-two-two, and Norristown took it, went inside right away. Yep. The weakness of the one-two-two, like the one-three-one, is the baseline in the middle. Right. And they went right to the baseline in the box. So in other words, the Lady Eagles reacted well to that to that defensive right. change. If, if you're going to if you're going to go after them in a one-two-two, you have to make a decision: is the chaser going to go after the point guard and make the, the team Norristown give up the ball sooner, or are you going to put the pressure inside the three and try and keep it a tight defense and trying to give up to avoid giving up anything in the paint? When you come out as far as the chaser did, you are creating a gap. And, and puts a lot of pressure on your team to recover. If Hildenbrand is quicker on the recovery, you can get away with it. You need, you need a player like Tamisha Leanne on the defensive side has that quickness and verticality. Mm -hmm. That allows you to stretch your defense and get away with faults. Mm -hmm. uh, Bob, when you were coaching, did you, uh, did you prefer uh, man to man or zone? We played whatever we thought, very pragmatic, whatever we thought would work, and scouting reports tell you. The liability on Conestoga's part is they have not seen Norristown. You can't go into these kind of games with blind spots. You want to know how many laces they tie and which side <laughs> they tie it before you play them. Right. Okay. There should be no surprises when you get into these kind of games. You want to know who shoots threes, who drives, who goes right, who goes left, who's your strong rebounder. You want to know exactly what they do on both ends so you know what you have to do on both ends. All right, we're back to the action. Dangerous bounce pass. Number 15, a good look, missed the shot. Danielle Marshall with a rebound to Halsey. Council Rocks coach is here, by the way, Joe. Yes. Here's Ashley O'Donnell, misses a layup. She might have been pushed. She might have been pushed a bit.
is at three by Shield. Hands are down on defense. Offensive rebound, Tamisha Johnson got away with a walk. Follow up, they, Conestoga gave him three shots at the basket. Right, and Tamisha got away with a, yeah. a, that could have been number three, I guess, on her, but she did go over the back on that yeah. and it wasn't called. Um, Coach Jackson should be sending a thank you card to the officials because he let her get away with one. Right. I think Bob has been a, a pretty well officiated game though. All, yeah. all in These all. are yeah. they're veteran officials again. They've right. been around a long time. Yep. Draw some uh, cat calls from the Norristown side of the gymnasium. Bless you. <laughs> nice turnaround jump shot. Missed the mark, however. Danielle Marshall with another rebound. Strangely quiet in this game, Bob, has been Leanne Moore. Right, and uh, I'm not sure if, if she's not feeling well. The team came out with a lot of energy, and uh, Danielle and Tamisha have picked up on that, and Sasha in the second half. Yes. And uh, Leanne's going to, she's got three, and he could play her now. And, and this, another side of the coin is he could play her, start her the fourth quarter and say, look, you've got three, I don't want, I don't want you out of the game. I don't okay. want you to foul. You're right. going to play smart, hustle, and you're going to execute, but you can't, can't commit that fourth or fifth. Sheely was looking for a foul on that drive to the basket. Might have a legitimate complaint. Drive to the basket by number four, Sasha Sims. Yeah, Sheely got, uh, Sheel got hammered uh, on that drive, but it wasn't called. And again, the, the, uh, the referees are doing the best they can. There's a fine line between letting them play and keeping control. Right. And, I, and I think they're walking that line very skillfully tonight. They're doing a nice job. You don't hear either of the coaches. I, I, absolutely right. Doing a lot of complaining. Yep. I mean, we get the usual from one end, but we're not, you're not hearing anything from Conestoga's coach. Here's Lundy into the game. Hillenbrand is out. Three minutes to play. Norristown by 28. 29. See, each quarter, each half, it seems someone else steps up. Yep. Danielle, the first half. T Tamisha, and now Sasha Sims Sasha is Sims. taking control in the third quarter. Yep. There's a rebound by Johnson, looking to run. Sims back to Halsey, she'll slow it down. There's Sims, rattled in and out. There's a steal by Shield. Nice play. Nice play, nice left-handed layup by Lundy. Use the left, Bob. Huh? Yeah, very important. That was very, yep. very important, and, and that allows her allows her to shield the basketball from the defensive player's hand. All right, here's a foul on Conestoga. Number 42, Lauren Lundy. All right, here's Quinn Dwyer out of the game along with Shield. Shield's been perpetual motion out there. She may be she may be a little tired. Here's Norristown working the ball. Inside to Johnson. Back to Halsey. Good look. I think Johnson got away with another one yeah, there, Bob. I, I thought there could have been another foul. Nice shot, Danielle Marshall from the left wing. 
All right, a minute and a half to play. 51-22, the Lady Eagles in command. Daniel Marshall with a steal. Yep. Inside. Foul on the floor. I really think, Bob, that, that Norristown is playing much better against Conestoga than they did against Avon Grove. Right. You start playing either way to the level of the competition. Right. And maybe you start to sense now a sense of urgency. Uh -huh. that, that Good point. The next game is really important yeah. if you really are looking for a district crown. Here's Tamisha's third foul, I believe. She could be out of the game by at this time with, with the two earlier plays that were no calls. Yes. Number 22 on the line will be Kristen Smith. <laughs> Missed the first of the one and one. Another re rebound that's by twice Daniel. That's Martin. happened to them, and, and yeah. you don't need to do that. They're letting you have points. You got to take them. I know, Bob. Long three. Tamisha Johnson with the offensive. Nice pass inside. Nice quick pass. And Ashley went to the basket real quick on that. She disposed of the ball, but there wasn't any need to foul because the, it wasn't a shot as much as it was a push. She didn't need to do that. But she's on the line for two. You know, it's nice to see, Bob, a, a, a bigger crowd. We have a, nice, we have a nice little crowd. There could be more out here, but uh, it's nice to see that more and more people are coming. Maybe they're listening. Maybe they're listening to Joe, Bob, and Tom, and our our our, uh, our request that they come out and support these kids. I would hope they're not only listening but taking notes, Joe. I hope they're listening to some of the things that you've had and Tom have had his editorials about standing for the national anthem and. Uh, those kind of things I think are important. It's all part of the story. Yep, thank you, Bob. Appreciate that. Nice play by Lundy to save the ball. Number 15 from the from the paint. See, that's a nice play on our part. A little shot fake, got the open shot. But Norristown also gave up an opportunity twice on the offensive rebound, one and yes. two, they allowed the girl to get in and get that kind of penetration. Here it'll go. Nice, nice shot. Erica Deaver. A, a, a three a three point shot from about half court. How now that's that? a that's a fan pleaser, but as a coach you won't be happy with that because right. if that score is one or two at this point, you're not a happy pup giving up that kind of shot. Right. All right, that's the end of the third period with the, the score Norristown fifty five, uh, Conestoga twenty seven. I believe the the uh, the uh, key in the third period was Daniel uh, Marshall's continuing excellence, both defensively and offensively. And Sasha Sims made some nice baskets. Nice basket. Again, uh, Leanne Moore has been very very quiet. Yeah. And Tamisha Johnson has been her usual uh, powerful right. self underneath. Right. Yeah. And if she controls those fouls, she'll be more powerful because whatever point she's putting on the board consider how much time she sits every game because she's in a third or second foul situation and that means opportunities are also lost you know you measure those things and yes. say to me she have to stay on the court and lay off the fouls and I, I said it a couple months ago she could be on the bench right now with four right. or five or uh, she could be out of the game right right All right, it'll be Norristown's ball out of bounds. Deaver to inbound. 
Have you kind of still good, Joe? You know you're only a quarter away from the end of the season. You want to finish as strong as possible and say to the girls, okay, it's 0-0. Let's get the last quarter. Right, right. Forget it. Let's yeah. get the last yeah. quarter and leave leave this season with a real positive feeling and then in the locker room you already start talking about next year. All right, let's see if we let's see if they do that. 55-27. Right. Well, it's 2 nothing. 2 nothing. Norristown just scored. I think so. some substitutes are seeing some time for uh, Conestoga. That's number 22 Kristen Smith. Sheely's back in, or Shields back in the game. There's Lundy. Nice drive. Nice play. I'm very surprised at how mobile she is and how easy she made that. She beat three Norristown defenders on that, got the shot, made it, and was fouled. I was very surprised on that. Foul will not her second teammate. And certainly the Norristown girls are a lot quicker, a lot quicker. Well, she beat three defenders. Yep. That won't sit well. Throwing those elbows won't sit well. Yeah, now you have to be you are careful. You allowed to, to go after balls and tie people up. You can't swing those elbows. You hit somebody in the nose, you break a nose. You, right, that's yeah, intentional that's, foul. Yeah. There's no need to swing those elbows. Nice play, Sasha Sims. Nice drive to the basket. Nice floating jumper. Inside to Lundy again. Nice left-handed move. Offensive rebound, number 22. Here's Shield. Shield looking to shoot. Stop. Throws up an air ball. Taken down by Leanna Moore. Halsey slowing it down. Six and a half minutes to play. See, now Erica had the opportunity to go to the basket yes, and did. She did. She had a, she she took she a nice open lane, yeah. And, and that's, I just want to say that's not acceptable. Nice three-point shot. If I'm correct, Joe, it's 5-4. If we're mm -hmm. going to do that by quarters, it's 5-4 yes. Conestoga at this point. And they do have one sub in. That was a nice, that was a, that was a beautiful three-point shot by Shield. And Norristown oh. has benched temporarily Tamisha in foul trouble on Danielle. Yes, that's true. And has put Eric and Ashley in. And that's probably the extent of the bench you're going to see until later in the game. Yep. Nice shot by Tamara Halsey. Drove, stop, pop, two points. She's played her usual steady floor game. Nice spin move by uh, Davis. As a matter of fact, Bob, if I had to name a Norristown player that was the glue to this team, it would be Halsey, I think. She's been consistent all year exactly. for the team. Not a good shot. It's a fade away. It's a fall away. Um, it's not a good shot. She's got. She shows that at times. She's not under control. And, and, she has to do a better job. You're going to go make that penetration. You want to make it going straight up instead of falling away from the basket. The pass inside. Good move on her part, but not a real good shot. The ball was too flat. She needs to elevate and use the glass if she gets in a position to use it. All right, five minutes to play. Bob, let me ask you a question. What is, when you speak about the low post and a drop step, what's a drop step? You take the foot closest to the basket and you drop it to the basket while turning your body and shielding the basketball in an effort to use the glass. The rule of thumb is, Joe, from the point guard or the feeder position, you feed the guard, you feed the post player with as long as she has both feet above what we call the interior or top of the box. Okay. 
top of the box. If she catches it to the interior top, she has the ability to go baseline and use the backboard since post players are taught to use the glass right. or the ability to turn inside. So that drop step allows them to, to put the ball on the floor and protect it or shield it and then jump up and use the backboard. But a lot of the post players catch the ball below the box and the only direction they can turn and still use the backboard is to the inside, inside right. so you need to catch above now, the guard or the two guard has the responsibility of saying if you're not in that position i'm not going to give you the basketball because right. now it makes the defense job much easier because they know the only way you can turn effectively is inside, inside. thank you that's about as clear as it gets fans it's about as clear as it gets here's a foul on number 10 jesse wasluski All right, four and a half minutes to play. Norristown in command. And playing up to the competition. Nice shot by Danielle Marshall, who is the story of tonight's game. That's a good post feed. Yes. Norristown's back with the five guns again. Yep. Tamisha's back in, Danielle, yep. Leanne. And they were pressing on that last play. Tamara drove hard to the basket. Ball knocked out of bounds by Conestoga. Tamara's asking why a foul was in goal. Yeah, and see, I think uh, she has a legitimate gripe. <laughs> You're up by 30. Play the game at this point. Right. The nice pass inside. There's a there's a uh, basket by. Uh, I'm surprised Leanne. that Norristown is pressing up by 30. All right. There's uh, Tamisha Johnson with a follow up. The only conceivable reason I could think of, Bob, is perhaps to get ready for the next game. No. Uh, so you risk injury, a lot of negatives could happen here. You're up, if anything, put your bench in, stretch your bench out a little bit more. You've got this one. You don't need it up by 30 points. All you're doing now is padding the score. It looks good. People look at it and say, wow, they scored 67 points. And your players padded it, but it's, it's artificial. I said I'm trying to find a reason. Yeah. Well, you didn't do a good job of it, Joe. <laughs> Thank you very much, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, Joe is my, entitled my to his opinion. Bob, right. And uh, <laughs> um, it's it's called groping, Bob. It's called you groping. Can, right. You can tell I'm a traditional orthodox on this. When you have the game in hand, yeah, you go to the bench. You keep everybody else happy. And, and me too. And you don't worry about right. the points. And, and I, I would well. be hard pressed to come up with a logical explanation. You have five starters out there. You're up by 30. There's three minutes left. Right. It's Conestoga's last game. Let it go. Yep. And he still has his five studs. Yes, in. he does. All right, Conestoga's ball, 67 36. Uh, that's a 31 point lead. Here's number 12, Christine Nerney. Nice turnaround jump shot. Didn't make the shot. Nice form. Nice idea. All right, Norristown slowing it down a little bit. Conestoga in a man to man. Conestoga has subbed. Yes, they have. At least three. Two, three, three players. Yeah. Three players. Yep. All right, here's a foul on, I believe, number 12. That would be Christine Nerney. One, two, yes, Christine Nerney. Into the game. Into the game now is Lundy. Out is Hillenbrand. Looks like they want to keep at least one at least one starter in there. And 
remains to see on the next possession if they go into their delay game or we may go back to their offense because in that last possession they were in a delay game. They picked up the foul, which puts them in they, what they want, a one-on-one -on -one situation. Yes. That's an opportunity to see if your players can finish at the end with the money on the table. Yes. But it's academic now because Leon is in and uh, is that it? Yeah, it's Tamara's in. So Leanne he's got Tamara. a guard and an inside player with experience. Hey, and Danielle. <laughs> Danielle might come out after the foul Mom. shot. Yeah, I would think. There you go. If she makes this shot, Danielle should be out of the game. Yes. Yeah. All right, Danielle makes the second shot. 69-36, Norristown by 33. Two, two and a half minutes to play. Here's a steal inside by Leanne Moore. See, I'd, I'd get them out. You yeah. get your starters out now. You don't need somebody to twist an ankle no, that's right. or, I, or do I, something. You I just agree. don't need that. You're up by 30. You yeah. kill yourself. Kill yourself. One of your players got hurt now yeah. in a 33-point lead. All right. Get them Leanne, all out. Leanne's out of the game. In for Leanne is number 21, Brandy Statton. Now Norristown has but one starter in the game, and that is Danielle Marshall. No, two starters. Oh, and Halsey. You're right. You're right. I pull both of them. They need those two for the next one. Plus, it gives the fans a chance to give them a nice ovation. Right. But get them out. Yeah. And he has a timeout. He can take a quick 20-second timeout. Get them out of there. Here's Tamara with the follow-up. And I believe uh, Halsey and uh, Danielle are coming out. Nice shot. Number 51, that's Megan Havrilla. All right, timeout, I believe it's Norris. Substitution timeout, yeah, that's, right. that's what he's doing. But. Yep. It's 127, it's not going to make them real excited. No. Uh, it, again, you want to make sure your players get meaningful minutes. Because Conestoga has already gone in the fourth quarter early, went deep into their bench. So when yes, you see did. that as the opposing coach, then you say, look, I have to. Yeah. I mean, what's, it's all relative. Nice length of the floor drive by number by number ten, Jesse Wazlewski. Number twenty-one. Now, Conestoga is very seems very basketball smart. They're looking baseball pass there, they're looking at, to get the ball up court. Uh, even at the end of the first half, when the shot was taken with Conestoga's player, the ball came down. The player had enough sense, realizing the clock, not to come down on a rebound and go up and try and get it yes. in. But you know, those coaches don't often teach those things. That's a lot of playing to pick up those things. All right, it's Conestoga's ball, half minute left to play. Norristown will advance to the third round of the uh, of the playoffs. Probably play against, probably playing against uh, uh, Abington. Possible venue for that game will be um, uh, Plymouth White Marsh. Possibly. Uh, we just received the statistics. The uh, Tamisha Johnson uh, is the leading scorer with uh, 18 points, followed by Daniel Marshall's 17. Uh, excellent scoring. Excellent balance. You had uh, Moore with 10, Sims with 10, and Halsey with 10. Uh, Johnson 
was a giant on the on the boards with no less than 14 rebounds. Uh, Halsey uh, dished out eight assists. That's that's a nice, well-rounded effort. Well, you have five players in double figures, Absolutely. but that's what it's, you need as you go in because you're going to have players for whatever reason have off games. The defense is going to do it or the player isn't going to be up to it. Mm -hmm. uh, you see Leah Moore now with 10 points, right? Yeah. And look at the score. It's still a f almost a, th it's a 33 point game. That's and Leah's right. only average has only hit 10 points. That's right. Here's Quinn Dwyer. 10 seconds left to play. All right, that's the end of the game, fans, with uh, Norristown with a convincing 73-40 to 40 win over visiting uh, Conestoga. Uh, I believe the star of tonight's game uh, has to be Daniel Marshall. Offensively and defensively.